Hey guys, welcome to another video. This one is how to use Coinbase Pro. Coinbase Pro is the slightly more advanced version of Coinbase. Once you've got to grips with Coinbase itself, you might wanna go onto Coinbase Pro. The fees are much lower, and also you get a lot more control over the type of trades that you can input. In this one, I'll show you how to use Coinbase Pro and all of the features. Also, there will be a trading tutorial. So I'll show you how to read the chart and also input three different order types into Coinbase Pro. I'll also show you how to add and withdraw funds from Coinbase Pro as well. If you haven't got an account with Coinbase yet, I will leave the link to sign up below so that you know you're going to the right place. You can sign up and follow along with the tutorial. Also check out the description for way more helpful videos and also the timestamps for this video will be in there as well for you. Let's come to the Coinbase Pro website then and I will leave the link to sign up for Coinbase in the description. If you don't have an account, just click that link to go and sign up. Although I would highly recommend that you sign up for Coinbase first. So coinbase.com and Coinbase Pro. They will actually use the same account, but it's much easier to sign up on coinbase.com, get all of your ID documents sorted and everything done. I do have a completely separate video on signing up for coinbase.com and a beginner's tutorial for Coinbase. So if you do need that, just check out the Coinbase playlist on the channel. Once you do have a Coinbase account though, all you need to do is just press sign in on Coinbase Pro and then enter your Coinbase login details. That's what I'm gonna do though. So we're just gonna press sign in right now and get straight into using Coinbase Pro. And firstly, we're gonna to come to the settings and security that you need to look at. I'm just gonna come up to the banking right up here and we're gonna click and see what we can change. Now, I assume if you're looking to use Coinbase Pro that you do already have Coinbase, like I said, but if you need any more help, then the Coinbase Beginners tutorial will be in the description for you. But there's a few things I wanna highlight here. Firstly, you can add and remove your bank accounts here. So if you have any payment methods or you want to link a new account, you can do it in the Coinbase Pro app as well. We can just click on link new account right here and you can see the options. So what's slightly different between Coinbase Pro and Coinbase.com is that there's no PayPal option in Coinbase Pro. You can link up your UK bank account, a Euro bank account. This is gonna be different if you're in the States, of course, but any bank accounts that are available will be here and you can go and add them. If you want to withdraw funds via PayPal, you do have to transfer your funds back into Coinbase.com and then do it that way, but that is perfectly doable and it's also free of charge. Also something I want to highlight here as well is the address book or the whitelisted addresses. This is a list of addresses that you send to often. So if you're using Coinbase Pro, maybe you have Coinbase Wallet, maybe you have a Trezor hardware wallet. All of the addresses that you send to regularly can be added here and also whitelisted. And this is a list of addresses that you have pre-approved. And you can see you can only add new addresses to your address book. It will take 48 hours. This is an extra security feature. So if your account does get hacked, the hackers can't send the cryptocurrency anywhere apart from the addresses that you have already whitelisted. Also, we can come to your portfolio and this will show you all of the account holdings that you have. If you're brand new to Coinbase Pro and you have some holdings in Coinbase.com that you bought, they will not show up here. So even though your Coinbase.com and Coinbase Pro accounts will be linked, you will not have any holdings in your Coinbase Pro account. They will be over in your Coinbase.com account. The way that you transfer cryptocurrencies or even other fiat currencies from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro is to come to your portfolio here and then just click on deposit and those deposit options will come up. Now what we can do is choose the crypto or fiat currency that we wanna transfer from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro. I have some Bitcoin in my Coinbase, so let's click on Bitcoin. You have two options now. You can of course deposit cryptocurrencies from other addresses. So if you have a Coinbase wallet, maybe Trust Wallet or another exchange account, you can come and transfer those cryptocurrencies out from that account into your Coinbase Pro by selecting this option. We can click right here. Then after I click on I understand, what it's gonna give you is your address and also the QR code. So you can go ahead and copy this wallet address into that other wallet or trading account and then go ahead with the transaction. On the other account, of course, you'll be looking to either withdraw or send, and it will give you the option to input either this, or if you're using a mobile app, you can simply scan the QR code. As we come out though, we'll just come back to coinbase.com, click on this, and now we can go through and actually just transfer from one account to another. You can see it does show me my holding at coinbase.com, and then my holding at Coinbase Pro. I'm gonna come and transfer the max amount, so I'm just gonna click on max. You can see my holding right here. 
It's also going to show you how many you have available to deposit. You can scroll down and see the fee. As I said, completely free of charge. So transferring in and out from Coinbase.com to Coinbase Pro, no matter what it is, fiat currencies, cryptocurrencies, you won't be paying any fee. You can also see your daily limit of uh, withdrawals or deposits. It's unlimited for me for Bitcoin anyway. And then the processing time. Instant is good enough for me. And this is because Coinbase is actually a custodian. So what they're doing is just taking it from your account and putting it over to your account again. So, and I'm just gonna click on deposit right here and we should have that over into our Coinbase Pro account instantly. I'm gonna press done right here. And there we have it. That is my total holding of Bitcoin transferred over. If you want to withdraw and send back to your Coinbase and come up to withdraw, click on Bitcoin or whatever it may be. We can come right down here to Coinbase.com, go through that transaction exactly the same again. Let's get on to trading though. So we're going to come over to the trade tab and we've got some cryptocurrencies on account to trade. So this is the main screen. And firstly, we're going to go through choosing currency pairs or this is a market that you can trade. Coinbase Pro does support a decent amount of cryptocurrencies and you can select every market over here. So we can actually click on a select market, then it's going to give us many different categories. At the moment, we're on the all tab, which essentially just gives us the biggest market. So you can see Bitcoin against the euro, Bitcoin GBP. Then we've got some Ethereum markets down here and some Litecoin markets. You've got some good information on the right hand side of these as well. Just a quick chart and then the price and also any movements over the last 24 hours. But you can change these markets, so maybe you want to only trade in GBP. Now, if you're in the States, this is probably gonna be USD as an option. You can see all of these cryptocurrencies now against pound sterling, so you can see and choose all of these, or you can come up to the search box and just type in your cryptocurrency. So I have BTC against GBP, or I can go to all, and then it will give me all of the Bitcoin markets, or if I change it to Ethereum, it's just gonna give me all of the Ethereum markets. Also, just to say that when you do choose these markets, this is the buying cryptocurrency and this is the selling cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin dash GBP, I will actually be buying or selling Bitcoin against GBP. That's fine for me for this tutorial. So I'm just going to choose BTC like this and then come down against GBP. Once you've selected your market, then you can come over to the chart and there are a few things that we can do with the chart. It isn't the most robust trading system I've ever seen for sure. There aren't many technicals or drawings that you can actually put on the chart. Maybe over time Coinbase will fill it out. But for right now, you can come to overlay and you have two EMAs. EMA is an exponential moving average. It takes the closing prices each day of the cryptocurrency, divides it by how many days the period is. So in this instance, you have a 12 day and a 26 day EMA. Exponential moving average is slightly different to simple moving averages because it gives more weight to the most recent closing prices. I like to have these on and when I was trading, I used these a lot just to give really a overview of how the chart is moving. You can also use these very simply as areas of uh, support. So actually Bitcoin is obviously in an uptrend right now and you can see that these moving average lines definitely are acting as areas of support. So when there are slight sell-offs, the chart just bounces off these. And so you would say that if the chart does come down and hit one of these lines again, it's a good buying position. And when the chart really does run up like it has here, maybe that's not the best time to get in. You want to wait for this to come down again. This has actually been a very nice chart over the last few weeks, of course, but none of this can predict the future. And so this price may be the lowest price of Bitcoin. You really can't tell, but it just gives you a slight guide of what is happening in the chart so far. We can also switch this to something called depth chart. So if I just click this, it looks slightly stranger. What essentially this is, is showing you buyers and sellers. So obviously red is sellers and green is buyers. And it gives you a visual overview of not just the price, but also the amount of volume that there is on the order book. So how many orders are in for buyers and sellers? And you can see actually at the moment, there are slightly more sellers right around here. Now the actual price is here, but if we just move away from the actual price, there's quite a lot of volume on the sell side right here, and it's not matched by buyers. You could potentially say then that if this continues on, the Bitcoin price may face a little bit of lower pressure Although this could very easily change depending on the time of day and when orders come in. So again, it can't predict the future, just gives you a snapshot of what the actual market is doing right now. I am gonna switch this back to the price chart though, and then we're gonna come onto the order book and trade histories. 
We can then come down to the price right here. And actually Coinbase Pro does it a little bit differently. It doesn't give you an exact price in the middle of the bid offer right here. That is actually up in trade history. So let's come to order book first. And what we can see here is prices and also the volume of trades. You can see that the market is going crazy. These are just multiple buyers and sellers trying to trade Bitcoin right now. And actually what Coinbase Pro does is give you a spread. A spread is the difference between the best bid and best offer. The highest bid right here and the lowest offer right here. What is the difference between those? That is called the spread and that will of course change all of the time. If you don't want these to flick around so much, you can actually come down to aggregator and just press plus. And this will essentially aggregate more positions. And so you're not seeing every single slight change in price. They are aggregated into larger groups. And so you don't have to see them moving around so much. There is also, if you can see on the left hand side, just a slight volume uh, bar here. So it's not very large because of the amount of aggregation that we have. If we actually increase the aggregation a lot, this volume should increase. So this is actually volume right here. Market size is the size of the order as well. And then we have the price. This is what you will use to determine your own order levels. And we'll get to that in a minute. But let's come to trade history first. This is every single trade that is going through in the market that you're looking at. In this case, Bitcoin against pound sterling. This is what we used to call the trade ticker. So you can actually see trades that are going through. So how big is the trade size? What is the price right here? And the exact time that that trade went through. So obviously green is buyers and then red is sales. This will also give you a good idea of how the market is moving. If this is mostly green, that's obviously a good sign right now. So you can see Bitcoin is moving up and most of these are green. But you can use a combination of the actual trades that are going through and the price also the price right up here and also the chart to actually go ahead, confirm a price for yourself that you either want to buy or sell at and then come over and actually enter an order. Before we get into entering an order though, I'm just going to go over the fees that you're going to pay on Coinbase Pro. On Coinbase Pro, you'll be paying half a percent if you trade under $10,000 worth of cryptocurrency a month. If you trade more than that, the fees will start coming down even further. These rates are competitive overall. If we compare it to Binance or Kraken, which is the number one and number three, so Coinbase sitting in the middle, half a percent is competitive. You can see some different fees though here for Maker and Taker. I'll explain this very quickly, but I'll also put Coinbase's explanation here if you want to read it. If you are a taker, that means you are taking liquidity off the book. The way that this happens is, let's say someone else, another trader wants to sell some cryptocurrency and you want to buy that cryptocurrency. They put their order on the book before you. They are therefore a maker of liquidity. They are giving liquidity over to the book. They are showing their order to the market. Because you bought his order, you are therefore a taker of liquidity. You are taking liquidity off the book. If you are a maker then, and you go and put your order on the book, you will get slightly lower fees overall if you're trading a lot of cryptocurrency. That may not make much sense right now, but I'm gonna go through two order types, market, and limit order. And these two types of order are actually different. So if you trade a market order, you are a taker of liquidity. But if you enter a limit order, you could be a maker of liquidity. Let's go to market order then. This is the simplest order. In this order, you do not choose the price that you trade at. If you want to go ahead and trade, so for example, I want to buy a Bitcoin with a fiat currency. Obviously, you can see the amount of fiat currency here that you have on account. For me, it's zero, but we can do it for this tutorial and the amount of Bitcoin. You can actually go through and deposit any fiat currencies if you want, press deposit. Then you can go through and choose pound sterling and go through a bank transfer or go to coinbase.com and transfer it in that way. If you wanna know how to do that, that's included in the Coinbase tutorial. But as we come down, we have buy. Let's say I want to buy a Bitcoin. Then we can come down and choose how much we want to buy. So if I just put in 50 pounds right here, so you're buying 50 pounds worth of Bitcoin. It will therefore show you the fee. As we know, it's a half a percent fee. So half a percent is 25 pence in the UK. And it will also show you the total amount of Bitcoin that you will buy. You can just very simply click on buy and that will go ahead right away and trade for you. Now, like I said, you have absolutely no control of the price that you're paying for Bitcoin. It will just come into the market here, look at these sellers and say, I want to buy 50 pounds worth. And it will just lift those orders for you up here from the sellers that are on the book. That isn't really any different from going to coinbase.com and entering an order. The only difference is your fees are lower. What's good on Coinbase Pro though, is you can enter a limit order. So let's click on limit and with a limit order, 
You can limit the price that you pay, so you can actually have complete control over it. What's different now is that I have to actually enter the amount of Bitcoin in Bitcoin that I want to buy. So this isn't the amount of Bitcoin valued in pound sterling, it's actually Bitcoin. So I'm gonna put 0 0.05 like this. So I want to buy 0 0.05 of a Bitcoin. And then also you can choose the price that you pay. So what you have to do is come over and look at the price in the market right now, 29,248, or you can come down to this level. A limit order will be completely useless if you choose a price that is actually at or above the current market rate because obviously you're just going to trade straight away. You therefore may as well just go and hit a market order. So we can come and see the price. You have to be quite accurate about this is 29,300. So we could come right here and put 29,270. We are actually below the current market price and you could put this order in. You can see the fee here is £7.32 and the total is about £1,500. You can change this though, of course. So whatever price that you want to pay and you're comfortable paying, you can change this. So I'm going to delete this now and put 50 in. You can see it changes. So what it does is multiply the price that you want to pay by the amount that you want to buy. And if I put a zero in here, then we'll obviously just move the decimal point. What happens then if you enter a limit order, but your price is way below the current market price? Well, what's going to happen is that your order will be entered into the book at your price. So it could be entered, let's say, right down here at this level. And you can actually click these and you can see it changes on the left hand side, the price. So it's actually quite a useful technique if you want to do that. But what happens is your order gets inputted into Coinbase Pro. They will put it on the order book along with these other bidders. And if the actual market price moves down, so if there are sellers at your price, then you will be traded and executed for that order. So when you do have an open order, if you want to scroll down and then we can just input a buy order right here, your order will come right over to this screen in the open order section. Another type of order though that you can use with Coinbase Pro is a stop order or a stop loss. This is an extension of a limit order. A limit order is just saying to Coinbase Pro, I want to buy X amount of Bitcoin at a certain price. A stop order, is a limit order with an extra on top. So let's go through first the limit price. So let's say we're happy with 29,200 pounds sterling per Bitcoin, and we want to buy 0 0.005 of a Bitcoin. It's exactly the same as before, but there's an extra option here, which is a stop price. A stop price is a second limit order, but it's a sell order. So with the limit order that we have is for buy, Obviously, if you click sell, that that would be for sell. But the stop order in here will allow us to sell out the trade if it reaches a certain price. It has to be below because this is a sell order. So let's choose 29,100. So what we're doing now is telling Coinbase Pro that I want to buy Bitcoin at 29,200. If though I buy that Bitcoin at 29,200 and the trade moves against me and I start losing money, if it gets to this price right here, 29,100, then please sell my cryptocurrency. So actually you're putting two limit orders in here. You're putting a buy limit order here and a sell limit order here. The reason that you would do this is to limit your liabilities. If you are an investor and you just wanna go ahead and buy a cryptocurrency and hold that cryptocurrency, and you have absolutely no intentions of selling it in the short or medium term, you don't need a stop loss order. Stop losses are usually used by day traders who trade very actively and want to enter into a trade, but if that trade moves against them, they just wanna cut their losses straight away and move on to a new trade. If you haven't got Coinbase yet, I'll leave the link in the description so you can go through and sign up for an account to start trading cryptocurrencies right away. Please give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you and definitely subscribe for way more helpful cryptocurrency content and I'll see you in the next one.